Hi everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna rip through Twitter, see what people are talking about, uh, give my financial opinions. Uh, we're gonna be covering a lot of wealth building, uh, commodity related uh, or financial related topics. Uh, again, if you wanna follow me, it is finding at, under, at finding underscore finance. And if you wanna join our community, it's finding-value.com. We still have uh, the word discount uh, for the coupon code if you'd like to join. Uh, we have a Sunday, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time question and answer session uh, coming up this weekend. Coming down, the coal trader. And, and I haven't seen some of these people post very often. Uh, I am seeing a lot of new um, people starting to post about uranium. Uh, it says uranium could get interesting here. And this is that Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, he's got the same trend line that I have drawn on a lot of different charts uh, that are breaking to the upside. Uh, a lot more people are going to start to notice this. It's going to start to be shared around uh, the internet. And a lot more people are going to be jumping on this train. Uh, hopefully you are positioned in it uh, and you've got what I think are the best companies or whatever you think is the best companies for uh, this uranium bull market that is coming up. Uh, I've done a lot of fractal analysis uh, on the companies themselves. What that means is you look at the size of the moves and the pullbacks and how it compares to other uh, bull markets and how uh, it might be uh, projecting a uh, wave three that's coming. And hopefully those fractals remain true uh, to the size of the move. So I chose mainly the big the big movers in uranium, uh, which will hopefully transpire into the largest size wave three moves uh, of the sector. Uh, that may not apply for everything that works great for developers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work that great for the explorers, as the explorers are also uh, kind of laggards in the group. So you might not get that gigantic uh, wave one move with some of these uh, ex exploration companies. Coming on down, we got high inflation on minor input costs, insufficient price inflation so far. Uh, Ronnie says, mind the gap while gold would have to rise 8% to reach a new all-time high. Gold miners would have to rise 193% to make new highs. So what's occurring here is the gold price has not gone up enough to really move the gold and silver mining companies. A lot of the gold and silver mining companies are, their cost curves are very close to the price of gold, uh, very close to the price of silver. Some of them are under, their cost curves um, are higher than the price of silver. So they're not making any money. Now, when the price of gold and silver go up, those things are going to be rocket ships for upside uh, movements. So if or when the price of silver and gold go up above the cost of the high cost producers, and then if it dramatically increases, the money that is earned by those companies do not go up linearly. They go up exponentially. When you make nothing and your earnings go to a positive they inflect positive, you divide by zero earnings, it's an infinite return, so to speak. I mean, it's not obviously going to be infinite, but uh, their earnings grow rapidly when the price of the commodity goes over the cost curve and really starts to take off. That is the leverage uh, in the price moves of gold and silver mining companies or any mining company for that matter. Uh, the leverage is the margin expansion between their cost break-even points uh, and the commodity going over those break-even points. That's what gives you the leverage. And high cost producers provide more leverage to the price move of a commodity uh, so long that it goes above their break-even point. Uh, this part, uh, it, it says, this is the part that matters. So from 85 to 2002, foreign central banks bought 28% of United States Treasury is issuance. From 2002 to 2014, foreign central banks bought 53% of the U.S. Treasury issuance. 
From 2014 to present, foreign central banks have bought 0% of issuance. And issuance has been $15 trillion since 2014. Fed and the U.S. banks bought most of that $15 trillion instead. We know how that's going. Uh, and we can see that the interest rates are rocketing to the upside. Uh, and there's no buyers from foreign central banks, uh, according to this post. Uh, this is what matters, is what Cuppy is, is saying. So uh, the majority of, well, all of the buying pressure has come from U.S. banks and the Federal Reserve. I don't know how this is going to impact all of, you know, what the impact will necessarily be uh, if we continue to have zero foreign central bank buyers. Um, we have a gaggle of bonds that are being released that need to be purchased. And we could see interest rates really start to take take off to the upside if no one is out there buying them. Coming on down, Joseph Brown, most investors make a little money most of the time and then lose a lot of money a few times. To beat the market, you have to do the opposite of what everybody else does. This means losing a little bit of money most of the time and then making a ton of money a few times. Uh, I agree with this statement. And that is how you make uh, a lot of money. Now, I don't think everyone is going to be perfect. They're not going to win on every single pick that they've got. So the key to this is to take good risk reward bets to get very good entry points based off of ratios, based off of technical analysis, based off of market conditions. If you can kind of line everything up, uh, hopefully you're in a sector that's very undervalued. And when the money rotates into it, the tide lifts all boats to the upside. Uh, it means that you're going to make a lot of money in some of the companies. Uh, if you have chosen correctly and you've scaled into companies that have very good risk reward, and you do it at a time when no one's really looking, that is where your opportunity is. You cannot be a part of the herd. And being part of the herd sometimes does work. But most of the time, it doesn't. For instance, like NVIDIA. I know NVIDIA came out with very good earnings. Um, with where they were positioned, you've got really poor risk reward, in my opinion. But it worked out for them. Sometimes it works for them. Sometimes it doesn't. The risk that things could go poor in NVIDIA, I think, is very high. Uh, I know the hot money is in there. I know it's chasing it. Um, I just don't play that game. It's too much of a risk for too little of reward, in my opinion. What I'm saying is I don't think there's going to be a 10-bagger to the upside in NVIDIA from the price uh, of where it was even before uh, the earnings release. Uh, Silver Ignite, D-Day Comet. Uh, all this year, we suggested the now backed in zigzags uh, on its way on the XAU to XAG ratio, uh, gold-silver ratio time. Uh, what we're looking for is a breakdown to the downside uh, for gold and silver ratio, where silver outperforms gold. Uh, we saw massive outperformance today in silver. When we break this bad boy, and I think it probably broke out today because this was 11 hours ago, probably broke out today, silver uh, massively outperformed uh, gold, and we are back in that uh, bull cycle for silver, I think. Uh, you can also do a long-term trend line where we broke the downtrend line in silver to the upside priced in dollars. So we're seeing very good positive confluence of information and data for silver to outperform. I hope that momentum continues. I hope the break the breakout is going to uh, continue. That's that's what I hope. Uh, looking at NARF, yep, we've got the uranium boom will make us ride in the big wave three. Hopefully that occurs there. Uh, again, I, I, I posted some uranium charts here. This is URNM, uh, clear breakout, guys. I put this at the tops here. Uh, any way you draw this line, we are breaking out. Very strong for URNM. I hope the momentum continues uh, and we get the big break here. Uh, URA, I overlaid a previous fractal on URA. It aligns very well. Uh, we had that kind of 
movement where it consolidates and we've broken that to the upside and hopefully this is something that could occur. Uh, this fractal looks very similar to the way that URA has fallen as well. Uh, so it's kind of like a big bowl shaped pattern. And that fractal that I grabbed, it was from a different company. It's from a natural gas company uh, of last bull market. And I just overlaid it on URNM, and it looks very similar to URA and the way that it fell. Uh, hopefully that's the case. Something on the lines of that. Uh, this is also URNJ. So we're also seeing the juniors uh, run into this mix. Uh, the juniors look really good. We got a nice little bullish uh, engulfing candlestick, and hopefully that momentum uh, can continue to the upside. Uh, we do have a little bit of resistance right where we're at, and we'll see if we can break through it here uh, over the next few uh, days or weeks. Another one that I wanted to post was the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. That is also breaking out to the upside. Uh, looks absolutely fantastic. There's your resistance line. Uh, we're breaking that to the upside. So one thing that's really uh, positive about uranium is it's doing it across the board. The juniors are participating. The big boys are participating. And the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust is participating. Uh, this could get very interesting here uh, right now. Uh, this is URA. Um, again, he's got this on a Hakanashi looking green. So what you want to do here on the Hakanashi is you want the green candlestick. You can see the green candlesticks going up in a row. It pulls on back under red. And then on the first green, that's a, usually a good time to buy it using a Hakanashi. And we've got another green that's uh, coming up here on this next month. So this looks good too. Uh, and hopefully we can get a big string of green Hakanashi candlesticks. Uh, on the three-month Hakanashi uh, thing from Scott. Um, Silver's back above its quarterly defined continuation breakout line. A breakout of this magnitude should leave zero doubt and clearly signal its intentions. It's a very rare event. So silver rocket ship defined on the breakouts. Um, what we're looking at here is a sneaky continuation breakout to the upside. So we're breaking out, it says now above the breakout line for silver. Uh, we had this breakout very similar to the early 1970s here. And if you look at the 1970s here, it almost looks like a similar chart that is uh, much larger on the right-hand side. So this is a little move, uh, and this is the big move. So if you were to compare this fractal, you've got the big move here in the early 70s. It, it, it consolidated and then broke out and had another very large move rocket ship. An another very large move rocket ship uh, all the way up here, that continuation pattern that looks exactly like this. And then we've just broken out and this could be a very big move uh, for silver that is coming up. And other potential um, precious metals, other, other precious metals as well. Uh, Russian crude exports are at multi-decade lows for the month of August as production cuts bite and refineries are back online. Seaborne oil exports are down significantly, especially from their uh, Western ports. And pipeline crude export volumes are down 350,000 barrels, 20% versus 2022. So Russian monthly crude oil exports uh, are dipping quite substantially. And here we are coming down here uh, in eighth, and this is where we're projected to be, is below uh, 2022 and the seven-year median. We can also see that total crude exports are way down uh, towards that five or seven year range. It's the seven year range that we're towards the bottom here. So very low crude exports from Russia. Um, the thing that gets me a little bit worried, guys, Russia's down, OPEC's down. Uh, we're kind of ripping through inventories. We'll see how this impacts the price. I, I think it's going to have a positive impact as inventories continue to decline over time. Uh, this is uranium, U.UN. Uh, Scott saying this is entering the fly zone. Uh, a lot of people are posting this. And we don't have much resistance left, guys. It, it's going to probably go to that fly zone and start to fly. Uh, Peter says, another week, another 6 million plus crude draw. Across multiple providers, the real-time data are it, is unambiguous. Global oil inventories are plummeting and will continue to draw. Paper market can be finicky 
But reality on the ground is a rapidly tightening physical market. The second half uh, of the year looks tremendous. Uh, QA Infinity posted this. I thought it was kind of weird too. It says, what is up with Nike? Uh, the stock has dropped 10 straight days. I thought the consumer was strong. Signs of a slowdown are popping up everywhere. Um, one thing I wanted to comment about this is, no, it's not just Nike. It's a bunch of different uh, areas where we could see a slowdown. And what that's going to occur is that people are going to have to rotate money into the things that they need, not the things that they want. Uh, Nike shoes is a want, in my opinion. Uh, and I also think a lot of other companies are wants uh, in the consumer uh, areas. A lot of the tech companies as well. So uh, while it may be hot in the short term, um, some of these areas, money is going to flow away from them, I think, into uh, more of the wants uh, and into the needs. And those needs are commodities. Those needs are oil, energy. Um, all of those areas are going to be areas where uh, it, is, it is the needs, not necessarily the wants. Fertilizer companies for growing food, uh, all of that. So I, I think the rotation is occurring. And I think Nike could be signaling that type of movement. Uh, Cuppy says, this is when the fun part starts, guys. Got uranium. And here we go. Uh, Canada's sanctions extend to the nuclear sector targeting subsi subsidiaries of Rosatom, which builds upon earlier sanctions announced in July. Um, so here we go, guys. It's going to get fun in uranium. Uh, someone asked me, what motivates you to invest? Uh, I can tell you, when I started working at at a company when I first started working, I looked around, I said, ah, these people don't make that much money. So I, it motivated me to look at other ways to generate income. And that's what motiva motivated me to invest uh, was the original thing when I was 22 years old, looking at my job saying, man, I better, I better invest and, and invest for the future. Um, I just didn't think that a lot of people where I worked made that much money. So I wanted to do better than just the people that were there. Uh, Eric says, we remain bullish. This is the U.S. commercial crude oil inventory levels. Uh, we continue to draw down. And I think second half, which is the rest of the year, we're going to continue to draw and draw and draw and go lower, 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 lower uh, in this oil inventory. At least that's the expectations that a lot of people who are involved with oil have. Uh, more crude inventory draws. Dan Johnson, half of all home buyers are making their first purchase right now per Zillow. That's probably true uh, because we've got the millennials coming into home buying years. So the majority of home buyers are going to be making their first purchase right now. And according to this, half of them, uh, which is going to be the majority, are going to be uh, new home buyers for the first purchase. That's going to be inflationary. New loans, new homes, inflationary. We're right in the middle of that cycle, guys. Uh, here's how messed up the housing market is right now. New home prices are below or are about to drop below existing home prices. The last time this happened was in 2005. So many people are locked in to low rates that existing home supply keeps falling. An old house is now worth more than a new house. The market is broken. One thing that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is how much does a lot of these new homes cost to actually replace the existing homes that are out there on a like-for-like like, um, exchange, not exchange, but a like-for-like like home. Uh, I'm not talking about cheap garbage homes where they just went cheap on everything like fake wood doors, fake this, fake that. I'm talking about a house that has real wood floors, real wood doors, um, that was actually made of, of real solid, good materials. Um, I would guess that the price of a lot of these homes is much higher to replace than the cost of these existing homes. So I, I'm, I'm kind of in the camp. It's like, look at, look at how much it costs to replace these homes. They're, it's going up dramatically. So if that is the case, then maybe the existing homes eventually should be more expensive than new homes if they were priced on a per square foot basis with equal materials. So, and again, a lot of the existing homes 
are in locations that are superior to new homes. Uh, so I also think that location is also going to have a big premium than where new homes could potentially be built uh, and sold for. Uh, JC says something big is happening in the silver market. Both SFE <clears throat> and COMEX inventories have been plunging. The run on silver is underway just as funds went net short futures. Prices are about to follow silver squeeze. So the silver vaults on the Shanghai Future Exchange continued to flow out on a large scale today, dropping a large kilogram uh, percent, um, once again hitting a new low since the silver squeeze. Lots of physical silver is leaving the vaults. Um, this is Grady. He says, last time this ratio chart bottomed big picture, a massive bull in mining started. It has been 22 years since last time. It should be time again since platinum setting up often shows a way for big moves. We've got a breakout here to the upside for platinum versus palladium. Um, this also signals the market conditions. Uh, this ratio bottom signaled the start of the last massive bull in mining in the early 2000s. 2001 is when it peaked or started to break out and move higher. We did that in 2022, 2023 <clears throat> is where we just broke out of the platinum to palladium ratio. This is signaling the market conditions where when platinum outperforms palladium, that is generally where you get these large moves in commodities. This is a confluence of evidence with this ratio, uh, along with all the other um, chart patterns that are set up in individual commodities, this is all just stacking up for a big commodity boom. That's why uranium's breaking out, oil's breaking out, copper's breaking to the upside, silver's breaking to the upside. The platinum to versus palladium ratio is signaling that those that the market condition is here for that to occur. So when platinum outperforms palladium, we are in the inflationary commodity bull market mood. That is what I'm trying to say. Another one is call the uranium bear market low back in 2020. Miners did 370% in its first move. SPUD is outperforming SPX, forming one bullish consolidation pattern after another. Back test to now, next impulse move is starting. This commodities bull is end of rainbow stuff, guys. So consolidation, boom, consolidation, boom, consolidate. We're just stair-stepping higher. Um, and this can break and have a very big move where SPUT outperforms the S&P 500. Uh, and we're in the middle of that move right now. Another leg higher. Um, gold, this is one very clean bullish falling wedge with a perfect back test, followed by a higher high, confirming a trend change on this four-hour chart. So gold is... Uh, at least in Grady's opinion and probably my opinion too, confirmed a breakout, a retest, and we're going to head higher here in precious metals. Uh, very bullish, looking fantastic. We're seeing a lot of falling wedges breaking to the upside across the board in commodities. Uh, energy service, uh, exploration production, uranium. A lot of them are just sitting right here kind of after their breakout. That is an excellent entry point for uh, the companies. So, yeah, it looks absolutely excellent uh, for a, a move for all these different commodities. Uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. That's a lot of information there. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, everything looks good for commodities. As far as I can tell, I can't find any bearish charts necessarily. Uh, and everything looks A-OK -okay in terms of ratio charts, commodity charts, priced in dollars, uh, and across the board for commodities uh, of all these different commodities. So uh, let's hope the momentum can continue. Let's hope this thing really rips it and everyone uh, makes the money that they thought they were going to make. All right, guys, um, that's what I've got for today. Uh, we do have a question and answer session coming at 5 p.m. on Sunday. I'd uh, love to see you there. If you're not a part of the membership, you can use the word discount to become one uh, in the coupon code. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. This is Finding Value.